What is up guys? Sleep Deprived Cacus here. Thank you so much for stopping by and today we have the complete guide for how to get the brand new Bastion exotic kinetic fusion rifle just introduced into Destiny 2 with the Season of Dawn. And yes, you heard me right, the Bastion. This was originally set to come out on the 28th according to the seasonal calendar but it's available to get today and that was due to the absolutely massive community puzzle that was ongoing. A mysterious quest from Osiris appeared at Reset, telling us to explore the corridors of time. Now, after discovering 19 unique codes, and the codes are inputted by going through certain doorways in the correct order in seven-digit codes, after all of these codes were found and compiled, we as a community built a map. This map led to an 11 digit special code room and every single person had a semi-unique code. So the community had to compile over 5,000 unique codes and the map looked something like this. That's a lot of data. Then after looking at the different passageways, essentially something more akin to this was uncovered. And once all of the data came in, the passageway from the start all the way to the end was uncovered and it revealed a like 20 digit code. It was five days of hard work from the community, but I'm gonna give you that code right now. And just so that there's absolutely no confusion, let's go over the symbols and what letters represent them. So we have Clover shown here, and that's gonna be the letter C. Then we have Diamond, D. Then we have Snake, S. We have Plus, P. Hexagon, H. Oh, and big tip here, make sure that when you're inputting this code, you're actually on the Explore the Corridors of Time quest. If you're not and you just do the code, you won't get the next exotic quest step. All right, so the code, AKA the doors you have to run through in the correct order are, get ready for this, C, D, S, C, P, P, H, 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 P, D, P, S, D, C, S, P, P, S, S, H, D, C, P, D, H, H, D, P, D. And the letters are appearing on screen right now as well as the symbols that you need to go through. I would recommend if you're on PC, copy down the letters and just paste them in your chat and you can like double enter and look at them whenever you're running through. It is a little bit much to keep track of. It's a very long code, but it needs to be entered correctly, except for the fact that you can actually enter it backwards in case you care. Now, as for actually traversing through this massive code, there is going to be several different rooms with quite a lot of enemies and the tadpole enemies that can get you stuck can be very problematic because dying actually matters a lot. You will respawn back at the beginning. So I would recommend doing this with a fire team if you can because it's not just game over if you die, someone can come back and revive you and then you can keep trucking along. But if you do want to get through this as quickly as possible, and especially for solo players, I would recommend if you can playing something like Warlock, especially Top Tree Dawnblade, which gives you access to Icarus Dash. This is going to let you blow through with incredible speed these rooms and really bypass a lot of the enemies and attacks coming at you, whereas the other subclasses and other classes may get caught with them. Additionally, if you have a sword and an abundance of sword ammo, which remember you can go to the tribute hall and fill up on sword ammo before you do this, you can warlock skate or, you know, skate with pretty much any character by swinging your sword in the air, giving you a bunch of momentum and getting you out of tricky situations while still entering the code as quickly as possible. Now, once you do enter this code, go through all those different rooms, you are going to enter into the same room that you entered into several times before if you've been getting the emblem and entering the previous codes. This time you will 
go to the grave in the middle of this room and pay your respects. There's going to be a good degree of dialogue saying what the community did expect, which is that this grave is your guardian's grave. And essentially, Saint 14 is saving us from our inevitable fate just like we did for him. Eventually, after this dialogue completes itself, you're going to get an exotic component and an update to your quest step. You're going to have to go to the tower and talk to Saint-14. Once you do, he's going to take your exotic component and give you an exotic quest. Now, very importantly, some players are reporting that they are not getting this exotic quest when they talk to Saint-14. And that is apparently because you want to be doing this on a character who has done the Saint-14 quests. So whatever character you went and did the quest to not only meet Saint-14 that came out one week, but the additional quest that came out a different week where you went and saved Saint-14, make sure you've done both of those quests or else it will not give you this next step to this exotic quest. So if you've done all that, the next step is going to be Memento, and the objective is to collect fallen intel in the Tangled Shore by killing fallen captains and servitors. Now you can just load into the original area of the Tangled Shore and just start roaming around. There is going to be two fallen captains and a servitor that spawn in that opening area, but that means you will have to compete with other players who at this point in time will likely be on this quest as well. If you want to get your own captains and servitors, I would recommend going into the lost sector in the Tangled Shore called the Empty Tank. There's going to be a guaranteed servitor that spawns right off the bat there. Also, if you head towards the Hallowed Lair Strike, there's going to be a captain that always spawns right in that beginning area, and both of those will be free from other players messing you up. So those are some guaranteed spawn points for this data you're looking for. In any event, once you get all five pieces, you're going to be prompted to go and talk to Spider. Once you do, the quest is going to update, and now it says to kill Arxenus bound by honor. And this guy is located in the empty tank lost sector within the Thieves' Landing of the Tangled Shore. So you're going to head in there and in the final boss room arena, instead of doing your normal thing and fighting the normal boss that's right in front of you, turn around, the special new boss is going to be behind you as you can see. Now once you kill that guy, your quest step is going to update and you're going to get an item. You head back to the spider, talk to him, your quest step is going to update again and this time you have to do three different things. You have to complete 10 spider bounties. And you have to kill 30 challenging enemies. And lastly, you have to do eight public events. Now there's some important information about these steps. So firstly, for the spider bounties, simply buy as much as you can. In fact, if you're full of the 20 ghost fragments, you can buy all 10 from the cheapest going up in price, obviously. And then you can just travel around the solar system doing the different lost sectors and killing the wanted enemies within. Remember, if you're farming those as quickly as possible, you just pop in the lost sector. As soon as you kill that wanted enemy, the bounty will complete itself. You don't have to kill the rest of the enemies. You don't have to open the chest at the end. Nothing. So just hop in there, run right to the boss, kill that guy, and dip. Now... For the other parts, both challenging enemies killed and public events must actually be done on the Tangled Shore. Now, it turns out that for the public events, if you complete a heroic public event, it counts for two points out of eight. So you really only have to do four of these if you're always activating heroic. So please try to do heroic. Right now, there are so many blueberries that are just you know, like throwing themselves at these public events and not activating heroic. So try to do that. It will go down much faster if you get two for the price of one. And as you're doing these public events, especially if you're activating heroic, the challenging enemies are so numerous, you will get this part done in absolutely no time at all. All right, so once you've done all three of these steps, your quest is automatically going to update, and now it says Grave Investigated. You're going to have to go into the Trapper's 
cave lost sector located in the Four Horn Gulch, as you can see right here. And the grave is a little unmarked. You're just gonna have to find it. Luckily, I found it for you and I can show you exactly where it is. As you go through the Trapper's Cave, you're going to encounter this waterfall. So hop down here, and as you can see, it's kind of stuck in the corner. There's a little bit of a, a shimmer to these rocks, and you're gonna have to interact with that to complete this objective. Once you do, by the way, a bunch of screeves start popping out, so watch out for those. But I digress, once you interact with the grave, your quest step is going to update yet again, and now you're going to have to do a special quest strike. If you open your map and go to the Tangled Shore, as you can see here, it's the Hallowed Lair Memento, and specifically, you're trying to kill a certain boss within it. And no, it's not actually the normal end boss of this strike like you may expect. Now, unlike some of the other exotic quests, you don't seemingly have to do anything on your way to that final boss encounter, so don't worry about that. In fact, this is actually match made, so that's another interesting piece of information. But regardless, you're just going to go through this strike as you normally would until you do get to that boss fight. And after damaging the boss a few times and going through some of his damage phases, you're going to see the text appear in the left-hand corner of your screen that defiled Rayusk the waning light has risen, which is the guy in your quest step. So he's going to spawn over to the right side of this arena, as you can see. And the second you kill this guy, the quest step is going to complete right away. You don't have to do the rest of the strike if you don't want to. And that's pretty much the only reason anyone's here. So you can just back out and then head back to Saint-14, talk to him, and he will outright give you the Bastion. And this is just an incredibly unique weapon. First of all, a kinetic fusion rifle that has never happened before in Destiny 1 or Destiny 2. So this opens up some pretty crazy builds. Running double shotgun was always possible. Running double fusion rifle really never was until now. And especially with the new Season of Dawn seasonal mods that can get you ammo back for running two specials, that's a big deal. Not only that, but this weapon seems to output a pretty considerable amount of damage. I'm very excited to use this up against some raids. And so guys, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed, found this informative, and if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.